<laughs> so, um, yo, like, Matt, um, whenever you want, like, just give me a countdown. Yep, I'm ready. Ready to go. I can count you down. Okay. Well, three, two, one, go. And because this is such an excellent game, time starts whenever you hit delete. Because if you delete a file, the game's going to be like, huh, you must want to start a new file that's brand new if you delete one. So that's what happens. So, this is a longer RPG. I will be sitting here in chat, watching uh, chat as much as I can. So, I can answer all of your questions, except for where do babies come from. I cannot answer that question. Uh, if you really need to know, ask Pokey here. He can tell you. So... Combat in this game is similar to, uh, like, Paper Mario, uh, series, with time hits, so you can time hits to do extra damage and all that jazz. Um, the storyline is that <laughs> we are in the middle of a, uh, we are a high school student, uh, internet. <laughs> Um, uh, and so, uh, high school student is in the middle of a dream, it is his dream, uh, bad guy from his favorite Saturday morning cartoon is attempting to take over the world and steal the girl that he has a crush on. Except some random dude named the wizard pops up and gives him a, uh, um, magic notebook that allows him to use everyday objects as weapons. Magic notebook also opens up something called, uh, the damage multiplier, which we are going to use the living daylights out of to do this run. So, the damage multiplier has one spell in it that uh, our next physical attack will get multiplied uh, multiply stack based on it, based on how fast we can match. And if you see how high my multiplier is, it's over five times now. I kind of mash a little bit faster than the developers have intended you to use it. So I'm going to one-shot, like, everything all the way through the game, because I'm good at mashing, and everything's just going to blow up, because that power is way better than, uh, expected. So now we are to our first sub-boss. Uh, there's a lot of sub-bosses in every level. Um, we also have these stickers at the start of every fight that we need to, um, to, uh, scratch off, so at the beginning of every fight, I need to, um, scratch off a sticker, okay, and rotate the joystick as fast as possible, and then in every fight, I also need to, before I attack, mash as fast as possible. So basically, this game is very good at ruining controllers. That's its main main, uh, redeeming feature. It also has a ton of random stuff in it that the developers of the game seriously thought that nobody would ever attempt to speedrun it, because they thought it would be too many to deal with, and they actually told me that. So, I guess I'm crazy. Um, okay, so, boss is 11 HP left. This boss has three phases. Uh, first phase had 60 health. Second phase uh, has. Uh, no, I'm going to eat a cookie. 
gain some health back. Second phase has 50, and third phase only has 11. So, we're almost through the second phase. Attack with the glove, magic glove. And have the boss paralyzed, so it can't actually attack us. And now I'm going to use the damage fire one last time. And now we'll hit, it, hit the boss with the CD, and that'll be end of that phase. There we go! And I'm going to have my first level, and I am going to increase my strength. Um, as you might know, just we don't have that many options in battle. Um, we just kind of have... Um, we only have multiplier, weapons, or punch. That is our only options. Whenever I get an encounter, it is impossible to... Uh, <laughs> everything explodes. Everything explodes. Uh, it is impossible to actually... Um, run from an encounter. So... A big part of this speed run is getting through every encounter as fast as possible and avoiding the encounters whenever possible. Also, that attack decided to miss, so that's kind of annoying. Because you only have so many uses of any item during the run. So... My item missed, so that means I only have... I've still got one guy left and no item to actually kill him easily with, so that's kind of annoying. But he's only got 12 health, so I'm just going to punch him out. I enjoy, uh, all the, uh, Kip is in chat. Now we're going to attack him like Michael Jackson and hit him with a white glove and moonwalk into him and boom, fight over. That is a backup weapon. Um, so on the overworld, on the overworld I'm actually going to be uh, using both the controller and the keyboard at the same time for movement because for some reason if you hold the same direction on two input devices at once you get a small speed boost. Um, this is our second mini boss. He is, uh, has a uh, first phase with a, a lot of damage, well, a lot of health, but we got our multiplier up to 9.9 .9 times, uh, which he has 90 health, and with a 9.9 .9 multiplier, we can get 91 damage on him in a single attack, so. Yeah, that's his first phase down in a single hit. And now I just need to hit him a few times because every time I land a good uh, magic attack, uh, any good attack, it gives me a little bit of magic back. And any time I successfully block an attack. So after this, my magic meter is built up halfway again, which allows me to use the multiplier again. And now I'll hit him with CD a second time, and this boss will be Toasty. Toasty and Roasty. Bam. Boss is all Toasty and Roasty. Sleep is for the weak, Spracky. So, now I'm going to kind of clip inside this rock here. There we go, got it. Um, and the reason... Whoa. Uh, controller decided to die, so we are moving on to entirely keyboard at the moment. Um, let's see if the controller's back. Um, so by clipping into the rock there, I was able to avoid an encounter, and since, as I said earlier, you can't run from encounters once you get in them, avoiding an encounter always saves time even if it includes clipping into objects to avoid it. So, just a little bit of headache. But we are almost 
done with uh, the first episode in this game. There are five episodes. We are not going to play them in order uh, because that would be boring and lame. Actually, no, there actually is a good reason for that. We will play uh, episode uh, four before we play episode three because it's actually a little faster to do it in that order. I'm going to increase my strength right here. Basically, you can only actually upgrade one trait at a time. And there's random what traits you have to choose from every time you level up. And so I want to, uh, in this moment in time, have mostly my strength increased, not my magical defense. We basically want to be a glass cannon so that we can continue to one-shot everything. That's the fastest way through. So here we go, cutscene. How's everybody doing tonight? As I just sit here mashing the living daylights out of the Z button on my controller to try to get through all this text quickly. By the way, that story exposition dump that we just got through was basically the guy in our dream telling us that, uh, yeah, uh, that guy that's the bad guy in your cartoons actually exists. And by the way, you're totally going, your crush in high school totally likes you. Um, that's good that you're alright, Pokey Hero. You've got to be answering important life questions for people. got one HP left. Ooh, that's bad. Guy only have one HP. Uh, let's hit him with that. If he's paralyzed, he can't heal himself. Oh, well, he healed himself. Guy's a jerk. This encounter is going uh, swimming. Okay. I got four point three. This should be enough to one shot him. There we go. So here we go. Boss fight of episode one. And you will notice that we are stopping the unholy union of Commander Hood and Samantha. And attendance and gifts are required, and our gift is going to be absolutely wiping the floor with Commander Hood. And that is a gift to the entire world that everyone can agree on. So as you've probably noted, uh, kind of the way for through this game is to build up the multiplier and destroy everything. That's not what we're actually going to do in this fight, uh, because he has a defense. Commander Hood has a defensive phase that he can go into, and he just went into, that the max damage you can do to him is 4. So if I were to use my magic leader entirely and get my multiplier up really high, and then he would go into his defensive phase, uh, the max damage I would do to him would only be 4, and that would be pointless, except any time that he goes into his defensive phase, uh, he can't go back into it for at least another four turns, so if I uh, build up my damage multiplier immediately after um, uh, break him out of the defensive phase, then I know that I will be able to do a ton of damage to it in one turn. So I have to, so I have to wait for that. So now I just need to defeat this last guy here. And get rid of that. So this last guy has got 16 health, so that's time for multiplier and a CD to the face. Bam. And that is the end of chapter one. And 
so Commander Hood has been defeated by a mere child, and Samantha tells us you need to go to school. But we realize that it's not actually Samantha talking, it's the other school nerd, and he's telling us that, hey, wake up, it's time to go to school. So, now, episode two, we wake up, and we go to school. And, uh, when we go to school, we'll find out stuff is, uh, not the way it should be. Because, you know, that's how school works. So, here we go. Since I'm the nerd, the school boy is going to pick on me. Except, last night in a dream, I got a magic notebook that made me super powerful. And, uh... School bully shouldn't have picked a fight with me. Because now I'm ultra strong and we want to make him go, uh, bluey. Oh yeah, he did so much damage to us. Yeah. Long day. Long day to mess with us. So, we just totally knocked out the school bully, but we accidentally also hit a switch during the fight that, uh, it turns out the Commander Hood actually is a real person, not just a weird guy in our dreams or our, our favorite Saturday morning cartoon, and for some bizarre reason, he had a giant death laser hidden inside the school that we are going to, and we just accidentally hit a switch that activated it, and, uh, as it turns out, Commander Hood also has all of our teachers as are his secret agents, so we need to stop him from blowing up the laser. So now we're going to our best friend Matt to ask, how do we stop the laser? To which he's going to tell us, after a bunch of dialogue, flip off the switch, and it will turn off. <laughs> Everybody knew that pokey. Um, so, if everything goes right, I can actually defeat this guy immediately. There we go. So, now I'm going to sneak around this maze here. Open up that chest, and then exit the door to the right there without triggering that. We're going to start the only side quest in the entire game uh, that we will actually do. There's actually about 60 side quests in this game, uh, but we do complete one during the speed run, and it is just for a single item. And also because the speed of this side quest, this particular one, is very short, so it's not going to take that much time to go out and go all the way and get it. Um. So, as you might have noticed, I've been using the CD a lot to attack enemies. Um, starting in episode 3, there are enemies that are immune to the CD, so I need to have another item that is also high damage output. Um, it does similar damage to the CD. And the quickest way to get another item that does similar damage to the CD is to uh, simply go to uh, complete the side quest. And whenever we do it, we get the baseball bat, which is very good for defeating stuff. Also. Get the baseball bat requires talking to two NPCs and defeating one extra enemy, so it doesn't take very long at all, and it'll be worth it in the end. So now that I've upgraded my strength three times, that's basically all I'm going to care about strength-wise now, now I'm going to focus on upgrading other stats the next time I have a chance, the next time I upgrade. Uh, the guys in black are very annoying to deal with because they decrease my stats. And the one they usually decrease is accuracy, and a lot of times, for some reason, even when your accuracy is decreased, only 
20%, about half your attacks will miss. So, let me see if this next attack actually hits this guy. We've had one missed attack, two missed attacks so far this one. So. Things considered, but didn't actually go that bad. Uh, and then we talked to Blake here, and Blake says, "Yeah, I stole the baseball cards from the nerd, and so we'll have to fight and get them back." Uh, but Blake here forgot that I have superpowers, so uh, yeah, bad choice, Blake. Uh, we're going to beat you and take the cards back and get them back to the other kid. There we go. And so now we just have to return back down here. Get caught on that door. We have to wait. There we go. We now have a baseball card. And we got the extra item we needed that will make episode three whenever we get to it a whole lot quicker. So that little side diversion will save us time overall. This guy is blocking the door. We kind of got the multiplier built up really high, so. Oops. And I missed kind of that shot. So, yeah, if you miss time a shot, you uh, only do half damage, so. It, uh. can, uh. really come back to bite us. We got it done, and now on to our last set of battles. I take a kind of wide turn there at the start of that room to avoid any counter again. Then I have to fight these guys because they're standing in the door I need to get into. Okay, four time multiplier. That's good. That's all I need actually to get through. We'll attack the guy in the back. Uh, with that, that hits. It did. Now, four time multiplier again. We'll attack the guy in the right because he can heal enemies, and I don't want to have to deal with the guy constantly healing every time I attack. So now we just gotta get this guy out. And he's got a good bit of HP, so I need to get my multiplier back up, so I need a little bit of magic to do that. And now it's up again, and one last CD. Bam! There we go! And let's see, through that door, and it's talking into this guy. Okay. I have to agree with the sign in the back of the room right now. Science does indeed rule. As somebody that has a bachelor's in biology, science is awesome. Good. Okay. a little bit more. And I should be able to uh, one-shot one of these guys. Pretty easily. And the attack missed because of course it did. Memorable quote. There we go. So there's 
that guy down. Also, the poster in the background says friendship is magic. Okay, so now it is time for the only instance of menuing in the entire run. Um, I need to change my inventory around a little bit. And so, there we go, inventory is changed. And now I need to check what stickers I got. So, what stickers you get is entirely random. Uh, and so yeah, I didn't get very good luck onto what stickers I got, but here we go. No more menu eat the entire run. It's not exactly common for an RPG. It did not have a menu. So this is our last encounter before the boss in episode 2. Okay, we actually did hit. Good. I don't want to hurt that guy anymore, because if I hurt him anymore, then he will heal and undo everything I've done. Okay, beating up on me pretty good, so I'm going to eat a cookie. Get up a full time on fire and hit that guy with the CD. There we go. Now, get my multiplier up again and hit this guy with the baseball bat. There we go. And, uh, I'm going to increase my magic. That'll help the next battle, actually. So here we go, on to the boss fight of episode 2. Uh, these are the evil accounting teachers, and it turns out that they are controlling the switch to turn off the giant death laser because all accounting teachers are evil. The accounting teachers are also clones of each other. Who knows which one's the original? I want to one-shot the guy on the right, and if I were to attack the guy on the left first, uh, he would actually resurrect the other one immediately, and uh, they would actually come back and kill me instantly. So, always attack the guy on the right. Yeah, this is a pretty cool story. Yeah, also, the accounting teachers not only attack us, but they also steal our money. So the last thing that guy did was steal 25 bucks from me. It's kind of unfair. But, we defeated them, we hit the switch. And now the B team comes and tells us, hey, you guys, you should join. Join us. We're like a superhero, we're all superheroes. You know, you should join join forces with us, and we're like, oh, cool, the B team? That sounds pretty cool. We'll still join you guys. And the storyline continues in episode 3 in a logical fashion, so we are going to go to episode 4 instead. 
So yes, we can play the episodes in any order, and the fastest order is one, two, four, three, five. That is because uh, episode three has some bosses that I need to be at a specific level before reaching, and uh, I can get one extra level up in episode four before going to it. And I actually don't need to be at that high level to complete episode four, so I complete episode four before episode three to get to that. So the storyline of episode three is that. Uh, Commander Hood has stolen the presents from the town, and it's up to us to get them all back. So we need to fly to Antarctica and defeat Commander Hood one last time, once and for all. And then we'll play episode 3 where Commander Hood's actually evil. I do find it kind of funny that in the speedrun it goes with if you were to be following the plot, Commander Hood's no longer evil, he's nice. Let's go back to an earlier point of the game where he's evil and uh, fight him. Speedrunning, man. Who cares about story? So, by the way, we are introduced to uh, Kamikaze enemies now. Uh, in this area, so the presents will blow themselves up after a set amount of turns. So what I want to do is always attack the other enemies first, get rid of them, and then just let the uh, presents blow themselves up without actually, you know, wasting any of my turns to defeat them. doing right now. Okay, so this present has one turn left before it blows up, so I'm going to punch it, waste a turn, and there it goes. You actually get a, a increased experience points if you um, get rid of them. The old fashioned way. Okay, I did this wrong. This puzzle is not any fun at all if you get a step wrong. It's really annoying to deal with. There we go. But we got it to work. And now, uh, one last fight, and then we'll actually be at the final boss of episode 4. Episode 4 is incredibly short. We actually spend a lot of time just on fetch quest in episode 4, because you defeat the boss of episode 4, then you have to deliver everything that was stolen, which is 21 objects. So these guys can paralyze you. Paralysis is annoying because it wastes a turn. And wasting turns is bad. Not only really that, it wastes in my dreams. And we only get to use any given item three times per battle. So I actually waste one of the uses of my CD, so I had to end that fight with baseball bat. Here we go, this is Commander Hood.
and he is the bad guy in the dreams, he's stolen all the presents, yada yada yada, let's defeat him. I'm hoping that he doesn't go into defensive phase. If he does, then... Rip fight. He did not. There we go. He's only got just a little bit of HP left. Now he's down to 7 HP. And when we're able to baseball bat, there you go. And we defeated the boss in 3 hits. Yes, that was the boss fight. Now I'm going to increase my speed. That means that I will be able to attack more often and not be attacked by enemies as often during battles. And now we just need to fight our way back so that we can actually deliver everything that was stolen. Take out these guys in the back first. Okay, I don't have that much multiplier builds up, so I'm gonna take out the white guy first, because he doesn't require as much health. Um, okay. These guys are annoying. They're slow and their animations take forever. So he's only got 16 health left. Now I'm 13. Let's put that multiplier up and get this bad boy out of here. Bam. Okay, and now continuing back. One more fight. This time it's with two of the snow monsters and one of the white troopers. Uh, we are going to get rid of the white trooper first. Since the white trooper can paralyze us and Waste time. I accidentally opened the Google Start menu. Snow Lizard Men. Yeah, that's kind of what they are. Right, this one's got 4 HP left. There we go. Okay. Final small lizard man. You know, that does sound like it would be a Pokemon. A snow lizard man. That, that probably should be one. And now the final fight of this chapter. It's a bunch of presents, as we said earlier. Presents self destruct. So I'm actually going to just attack one of them and let two of them explode on their own. So, one explodes, two explodes, one's got only one attack left, there we go, there's that battle. And now, we return everything to all 21 people. So I actually do this in a specific order, because after I return everything, I need to go to a specific part on the map to, uh, uh, give, uh, to trigger a cutscene, so what I'm going to do is talk to everybody in an order so that I'm going to, uh, trigger that cutscene as I'm giving, uh, the gift back to the final person in the room. So, if the, uh, route 
doesn't look like it would be the best, that's why. It's because we want to uh, make sure to trigger the cutscene kind of at the same time. It saves a little bit of time. So. So now, back into here. Talk to the Burleys again. Give them their stuff back. Talk to Henry down here. Cece. Charles Cheeser. Totally do not like Chuck E. Cheese's. And then the student hiding in the corner and trigger the cutscene. And now we need to talk to this uh, bear. It's called Santa Claus. Or, 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 or. To which he tells us, you were really mean to Commander Hood, and we're like, um, you know, Commander Hood was trying to take over the world, so we defeated him. But the guy says, if you want me to call you good, you need to go back and say sorry to Commander Hood for getting in a fight with him, and give him something. So now we're going to go back to Commander Hood, tell him sorry, and give him a toy playset, and Commander Hood is going to tell us that he is never going to be evil again. And then we're going to go back in time and then play episode 3 where he's trying to blow up a giant dam that destroyed the sap town. So I guess because we played the game out of order, it looks like he went back on his promise to be good immediately as soon as we, uh, as soon as he said he was going to be good. I love this speedrun. So we gave him the toy playset of his uh, secret base. And now we'll go back to episode 3. Episode 3 is the longest episode in the game. Um, it has a lot of items and it's got a lot of enemies that are just in the normal places on the map that we cannot skip so it's got a ton of encounters and it's got a bunch of puzzles that we have to complete so just because of that it's kind of slow to move through and therefore becomes the longest episode in the run so the basic storyline here is that some knockoffs of the decepticons have teamed up with commander hood and Commander Hood has given them a drug called Gigatron that makes them more powerful, but it's also addictive. And unless they get Gigatron, the Decepticons are going to blow up the town. So we need to stop the Decepticons and get uh, and destroy all the Gigatron. Because drugs are bad. So, these red cars cannot be damaged by the CD. So, that's why I got the baseball bat earlier. They also can do... They also can go in this defensive phase where... Uh, they can only take one damage at a time. Which is annoying and slow. And I hate it. And why did they design that in? And it can just take a random amount of time to deal with it. So we hope you don't get trolled too hard by that. However, if, uh, ooh, so that attack missed. So now I'm going to have to deal with this guy the old fashioned way. So, but the good thing is if there is only one of them left, they cannot go back into defensive phase and only, <laughs> if only one of them at a time can be in defensive phase, so. As long as I always make sure to select the right one, then everything will go alright. Mm, there we go. Butterfly is down. He has been defeated, so now we have to defeat the Decepticons on our own. But that's alright. So, yeah. We're just heading to the Gene Claude Van Dam. It's literally a dam named the Gene Claude Van Dam. Good pun. I like good puns. 
So, how is everybody enjoying this game so far? I will tell you that my arms already hurt from all the mashing I've been doing. And by the way, this is also my favorite enemy in the game. This is Sun Howl. Not unlike Starscream. Uh, we are actually going to come across this guy multiple times. Um, hopefully, we get him in like uh, one hit. There we go. Yep, we got him in one hit. Hopefully, we get him in one hit whenever we see him again. Also, for some reason, after that fight, uh, the main character, his walking animation doesn't work correctly, and you just slide across the ground there for no apparent reason. And it's pretty funny. And now, now we get to deal with these guys. Uh, Whenever they defeat, get defeated, they blow up and damage the other enemy. They also have incredibly high speed stats, so they attack like three to four times for every one of our attacks. But since they blow up and do damage to themselves, to any other enemies of the area, we actually usually only need to attack one, and hopefully the explosions will actually defeat the other enemies for us. So. Kind of careful there, avoiding that encounter. And again, funny movement is faster than getting into a fight, so. guy exploded, so hopefully I've got, he's had enough damage to him now that he's just been shot again. Yep, there we go. And so we hit this switch. And now we go this way. And here we go with this guy. So whenever there's multiple of these floating white guys, I always want to attack the red ones because uh, the other ones, when they blow up, they give status effects, whereas the red ones, when they blow up, actually do damage to everybody. So. There we go. Well, here's that fight done. Across this bridge, and immediately get in another battle. This one would be very different if we could run from the counters. It would be very, very different. But as it is, anytime we get in the counter, we need to see it through. So. This guy has got one health left. There we go. Get out of there. Go down. Get into battle with this guy. These are kamikaze bots. They get more and more annoyed over time until they eventually explode on their own. So they're both at 20% aggravated level, and my attack missed. So let's try to attack again. There we go. He'll be up at 40% aggravation now. But we'll defeat him in this hit. 60%. There we go. 
And... We'll upgrade our strength again. Makes the next boss fights easier. So I'll hit that switch. Wait for that guy to go that way. That switch. That switch. We'll attack the guy in the front, I guess we'll damage the other two and make them both aggravated because anytime we defeat an enemy and they take damage, you know, they, the kamikaze bots will get aggravated. And we want them to get fully aggravated so that they just destroy themselves and we don't actually have to attack them. So most of these guys are at 40 aggravation now. And I'm hoping that one of them will go all the way up to 100%. So one of them's at 40, one of them's at 60. I'm going to attack the one at 40. Because the other one will most likely get fully aggravated. There he goes. So yep, he got fully aggravated, so he just kamikaze attacked us, and we didn't actually have to attack him for him to be defeated. So, save some time. I wait for this guy to walk past, because again, waiting saves time as compared to actually fighting him. Now we get in a battle with this guy. A magic leader. A multiplier. Aggravated. Aggravated. Uh, I'm going to attack one of the Kamikaze bots. Well then, that was good. My attack missed. I am getting a ton of dropped attacks this run. I want to attack the con the regular guy. And he goes into defense mode. I'm just gonna restart this encounter. You can restart battles at any time, you just cannot run away. So let's retry this. That guy goes into defense mode immediately this time. Because RNG. So let's see if we can defeat the Kamikaze bots. Oh, he's still in defense mode. Missed because of course it did. Four and a half. But by time this way, I should still be able to take out this guy, and he went into defensive mode because of course he did. Even though he was just in defensive mode. Because again, RNG in this game is totally not a thing. There we go. He explodes. Get out of defense mode. Thank you. Now let's try this again. Let me defeat you. There we go. Yeah, the red car guys are pretty annoying. The randomness with them is quite real. That's why the estimate for this run is like 15 minutes higher than my world record. Wait for that guy. Everything's good. We will fight a super boss in this run. Because you guys donated for it. And that will come up in episode 5. These two guys are going to go into defense mode. I don't know which one. It's 
most likely going to be the red one. Yep, it was the red one. So, yeah, that's annoying. Get out of here, yellow one, and get out of defensive mode so I can do more than one damage to you. I'm just going to keep punching this stationary car because I am the main character and I am smart. Whoops, that was not the. Uh, that was not the Z button, that was the shift button, and I turned on the sticky keys. There we go. Okay, and through that door, and down. Shout outs to sticky keys. And then around this way. Not like this. So I'm going to attack the yellow guy. Now I'm going to attack the Kamikaze bot, and hopefully by that time, the guy in the red car will get out of defensive mode. There we go. He's still in defensive mode, but now he is out of defensive mode. So once I build my magic meter back up enough, um, we'll uh, be good. Okay, so now I can do my baseball bat. Get rid of him. Damn. And now we come to a... Well, we come to a fight with three of these red guys that can go into defensive mode, because having to deal with one random that go into defensive mode was not enough RNG, so let's have three of them at once. So we'll see which ones... Okay, so two of them will go into defensive mode. I'm going to have to remember that the guy in front went first. So that means that the guy in the back is most likely to get out of defensive mode first. So they both got out of defensive mode immediately. And that means that uh, whichever one will go first is most likely to go into defensive mode. And as I said earlier, the guy in front is prioritized to go first. So we'll attack the guy in the back. And my attack missed because of course it did. So, since I only have three uses of baseball bat, I'm going to have to punch this guy just till he is defeated. And that is enough. Three times multiplier, that should be good. Yeah, the amount of misses I've been getting this run is definitely higher than normal, but it's a it's a marathon. What can you expect? So now I've just got one guy sitting here in defensive mode, just being annoying. It's all good. Multipliers built up high enough, and baseball bat. Boom! He's dead. And now we come to a uh, mini boss, and actually I did my leveling very specifically with this boss fight in mind. So I only increased my speed once, 
So, and that is because this guy can only be hurt every fifth attack. And, well, every fifth turn of his. Uh, there's not that much time left. So, because I've only increased my speed stat once, I am going to punch him twice, then use my multiplier twice, and now he will attack me, and my turn is next, and I have fully 9.9 .9 charge multiplier, and he is just sitting here, and bam, we just one shot at that boss. And quite literally, the very next turn, he would be invulnerable again. So it's a very difficult boss if you don't know the time. And, uh, yeah. Uh, my mic's being annoying. I don't know, Ghost King. Uh, how much time is left? Or what time? What is time at now? Because <clears throat> this is the fourth episode that we've completed. So we've completed three episodes. We've almost completed our fourth one, and then there will only be one left. So um, not that much longer in this run overall. One hour, one minute. Oh, we will be well underestimate. Well underestimate. So here we go. This is the final boss fight of episode uh, three. And I need a lot of stuff to line up perfectly for this fight to go correctly. So I first off need to get my multiplier over seven times in this first phase here. We got it over eight. Perfect. He is going to fly off screen in four turns. Okay, so I also reflected that attack at him. That is about like one thirtieth of a second timing. Okay. Bam. And we defeated the boss in pretty well record time. Bam. That worked out beautifully. Now I can actually start increasing my speed stat. Because, um, yeah, time-wise. Yeah, time-wise, we're doing it very well. Yeah, Ghost King actually did find some type for this game. Oh my goodness, achievements. There we go. Episode 5, final episode. By the way, Ghost King, I have started playing the episodes out of order again. It just seems more consistent and just slightly faster to play the episodes 1, 2, 4, 3, 5. Just because of leveling. How leveling ends up working out if you do it in that order. Okay, so by the way, this is a new uh, glitch that I'm going to show since we've got enough time to show it. Okay. Let's see if I can get it. If I open this menu at the same time that I start... There we go. Here we go. Um... There we go, so now I am moving around with the menu stuck pasted over the entire screen. <laughs> Very tiny little glitch that serves no purpose. Just wanted to show that. Yeah, but it requires opening the menu at the same time that you start that minigame. <laughs> and once you close the minigame, the menu stays open, and the game's just confused as what to do at that point, so... The menu stays over top of the screen. And... 
as a result that happens. So, story-wise, we have flown into space, and a guy named the Financer has pointed a bunch of nuclear missiles at Earth, and he's going to destroy Earth, and we need to save the planet. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, the Financer is the guy that gave all the money to Commander Hood for Commander Hood to be evil. <laughs> so, now we need to defeat the real villain behind the scenes. So, by the way, he is in a space station the size of the moon. And people thought it was the moon at first. And Giant Space Station has enough uh, uh, offensive capabilities to destroy a planet, and we need to destroy the space station before our home planet gets destroyed. And guys are kind of running around in uh, Stormtrooper-like outfits. I wonder what this episode could be homage to. I just got a really sneaking suspicion that uh, uh, this game, you know, is like something else. Nice meme, go Origines. Nice meme. So to actually get to the final boss fight of this chapter, I need to hit three switches that are hidden around. Um, but chat, crush or save? You have no context to this, this decision. Whichever one is first, I am going to choose. And then we will fight the Trash King monster. As the donation incentive was. Okay. Crush. Okay, so we are going to crush. Crush is actually the faster of those two options, so good job, chat. Oh, the ending theme song is glorious. So, a rundown on these stormtrooper light guys. Every single one of them has uh, different abilities. So the white ones have... Um, they can heal themselves. They've got slightly less health. Red ones can call, call in recruits if they're the only ones left in the battlefield. And the black ones do the most damage, but they also have low, low health. So generally, I always aim for the red ones first. That way, we uh, get rid of them before uh, they call in too many recruits. Yeah, to um, fight the trash monster, you have to choose to either save or crush a character, and so. And the attack missed. 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 Because of course it does. And he did help a lot with his commentary for Scrabathon. And not only that, we had one of the games, we had the game's producer actually come online and tell us a lot about the game. And I think the favorite the best thing that everybody found out with this game um, was that there is an entire backstory to a secret character in this game that appears quite often that's named Ben, who 
There are four separate side missions in the game relating to Ben clogging toilets, and we have to rescue Ben from the toilet he has clogged. And we thought that, and everybody just thought that that was kind of funny, ha ha ha. Nobody realized what, what on earth any of that was about, it just seemed kind of funny to be in the game. So it turns out that the game's producer, his name is Ben Moore. And he said that that was actually all the other developers poking fun at him. So whenever they went to a gaming conference to advertise this game, hey social, um, six of the game's developers and the producer all shared one hotel room. While they were there, uh, Ben apparently had really bad diarrhea and clogged the toilet. And all the other developers were kind of so annoyed with him doing that that they just created a new character named Ben that was constantly clogging toilets. <laughs> so here we go. So, yeah. <laughs> Potentially my favorite just thing, like, in all of this game. <laughs> Whoops, and you guys selected to crush Ben who is based on a really nice guy once you actually talk to him in real life, Ben Moore. Well, I got an extra sticker and some XP. Here we go. Yeah, he was really cool to chat with. So here's Ben heading down. Marty! I don't, you don't understand how much relief this is! Can you get me out of this trash compactor? There's toots everywhere! It's so gross! So we can either compact Ben... ...or save him. Compaction! Oh no! Why would you do this? So let's upgrade our defense. We'll leave the room. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Come back in. And look at that. There's poor Ben just laying in the mud. With a monster sitting over top of him. He won't say anything, his eyes are X's. Poor Ben. Let's fight the monster! So this is the monster we donated for. So yeah, the monster lives in the bottom of the trash compactor. He has one giant eye. And yeah. He is totally a ripoff of uh, Star Wars A New Hope. <laughs> He also insta kills me if you don't kill him before he reaches you. Except, uh, yeah, we're not gonna let him reach us. <laughs> Yay! Donation incentives! So, yeah, that was the fight. <laughs> that was what you donated for. <laughs> so you donated, and you got to see Ben crushed. And you've got to see what the trash monster is like. <laughs> I mean... 
if it hasn't been made clear at this point, mashing is kind of overpowered in this game. Go. And there we go. So now we have also hit all three switches, so now we can actually go to the final boss of the chapter, and since this is the last episode, we're playing the entire game. And so we'll be able to blow up the space station and save Earth. It was a pretty valiant cause, really. So I'm going to attack the red guy first because there's only three enemies at a time that can be on screen. So if I were to attack the black or the white guy, then the red guy would just bring in another recruit and that would waste time, so we get rid of the red guy first. And the black and white guy can't go on now, so now there's only two left. Pretty easy to forget to do, you waste a ton of time if you don't remember it. There you go. It's all three of those guys. And then this guy. Same principle, we'll attack the red guy first. 6.8 multiplier is way overkill. But it's only. Uh, attack the red guy. Go. Ooh, he's got just a little bit of health left. And he still has health left, he's got one health left. There we go. <laughs> Bam. Okay. Interact escape. So final fight before the final boss fight of the run. And it's three of these red guys that can call in recruits. So if you haven't noticed, red enemies have a tendency to have a lot of RNG. Because it is random whether these guys will call in one extra recruit during this fight, or two extra recruits, or no extra recruits. So we want them to call in one, they'll probably call in two, since it is terrifying. We'll see how this goes. So there's one recruit called in. And... They called in one recruit. So a good RNG, actually. Yeah, so only calling in one whenever there's potential for them to call in two. That's actually pretty good. There we go. So final boss fight, and then time does not end at the final boss fight. Time actually ends because uh, there is an escape sequence. Uh, 
where we have to make sure to get out of the space station before it finishes, before it explodes. What's time at right now, by the way? By the way, we've used the multiplier a lot to get through enemies quickly. This guy is kind of annoying. So he has... Um, he has the ability to uh, negate our, anything that we've built up with our multiplier. With one of his attacks. Um, however, we saved the gloves from the beginning of the run, and as a result, um, we were able to paralyze him on the first turn. So he stayed paralyzed, and we were able to get our multiplier up high enough to one-shot him anyway, even though we shouldn't have been able to. So this is, this is a very scary fight, because second phase does a ton of damage. Going to attack once more, then heal, and my magic level will be good enough to be able to one shot this guy. And please live. We lived. This is why I also came into this fight with a bunch of cookies. Time to one-shot the boss. Hopefully. Okay. I might be dead. Yeah, I'm dead. That just did not look out of my favor. So let's see if I can actually get him to um, get paralyzed here again, like first turn. So that will save time. That will be the easiest. He did not get paralyzed, so let's try again. Okay, he threw out the hockey stick. He's paralyzed. This is perfect. And... He's got so little health left. I think I can get him with just one baseball bat. Okay, he's only got three health left. This is actually working out better than I thought it would. Because I reflected so many of his attacks, I didn't actually need to one-shot him. So now I have my magic meter built fully up. Going into this place. And. Time to one shot the boss. Okay. But I need to get a righteous timing for it to work. We did it. <laughs> yeah, seriously, this boss is terrifying. But we're pretty we're pretty well home scotch free now. Okay, and I'm gonna punch this guy. Finish him off. Get the magic book back up. Yeah. There we go. Okay, final fight. Time is coming up. We just need to escape. And the music for this final escape sequence is amazing. Yeah, get sleep. So now we need to just go the correct way so we don't trigger explosions because explosions are slow. But I'm going to turn up the music because the music in this is amazing. Give me a second. And I'm going to shut up until we finish.
Okay, so we have to end. That was time. That is time. It's going the no risk, no glory route. One twenty-five thirty-one. Oh my. <coughs> so that was about ten minutes slower than world record. Um. So I'm going to get my next game set up here, really quick.